This will be a one-off video. Don't think there will probably ever be another one quite like it that I will do for this channel. And therefore, I'm not wearing a print shirt today. <laughs> so anyway, um, we've been following this lawsuit that uh, Elon has filed uh, or that Tesla has filed. I'm, I'm sorry, X has filed against Media Matters. I think it's a very, very important lawsuit. Uh, the Attorney General of Texas and maybe of Missouri are also looking into the possibility of having a criminal, or they are doing a criminal investigation with the possibility of criminal charges being filed against Media Matters over this issue. And I've seen a number of articles coming from mainstream media that would suggest that this is a ridiculous uh, uh, attempt uh, that it will never have any chance of success. Well, now I have something that indicates that it has every chance of succeeding, and I thought you might like to see it. So this is Randy Kirk. Maybe you'll have to decide later whether you wanted to see this or whether you stayed with it till the end, because I think it's worth staying to the end to get all of the de details if you're interested in this kind of thing. And uh, then hit like and subscribe. And later on this afternoon, of course, I will have the Tesla News of the Day. And it's really good today. So you, you want to come back for that. And then tomorrow, a uh, regular programming in the morning. And of course, my normal Sunday night program, which we call Monday morning, as we discuss the news and the financial events coming up next week, which includes the CPE. So therefore, it's going to be an important week. All right. So um, uh, have you bought your Tesla Cybertruck bottle opener yet? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know this one. Yeah, you 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 know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> so there's the magnet on the back. That's what I was showing you there, the magnet on the back. And, you know, somebody said, yeah, it really is. It's not, there's nothing flimsy about this. This is three inches of stainless steel. Uh, and 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, right? Now, it doesn't matter how many you buy, you get it for 20 bucks. Sold about 100 uh, since we <laughs> announced the price difference. So that has been definitely the sh most amount in the shortest period of time. Uh, so if you haven't bought it yet, uh, pay, PayPal me, paypal.me forward slash Randy Kirk, all in lowercase letters, add 20 bucks if you're not in the country, quite a number of orders coming in from outside the country, because obviously if you can save the uh, save the money on the purchase, then you can afford the, the extra freight. All right, so let's dig into this article. This is coming to you from Ken Kenakoa the Great. That's the, the what he uses in his uh, as his uh, handle on Twitter. I'm sorry, X, and uh, he says Elon Musk's lawsuit is well grounded in Texas law and could prove very expensive for media matters. And he suggests that uh, there's an excellent article in legal legal and anal analysis by ex lawyer Baseball Crank. So maybe this is him picking that up. I'm not 100 percent sure. It's not quite clear to me. The specific charge by X in its lawsuit is that Media Matters took extraordinary steps to games to game X's system in order to evade all safeguards for placing big corporate sponsor ads next to extremist content. So if you haven't been paying attention, what the scuttle on all of this is that X does everything it can to make sure that your ad, whatever ad you're running, doesn't run uh, next to any content that you don't want it run next to. This is common uh, practice. Uh, I've advertised in hundreds and hundreds of magazines. And if you don't want your ad to run next to a certain kind of content, like say your competitor's content, then you can say that. Um, and uh, in this case, uh, there's uh, stuff on X the whole purpose right now, the whole reason he bought X, that, that Elon bought X, was to make sure that everybody's opinion, no matter how horrible, as long as it was legal, uh, as long as it didn't violate, you know, ethics or, you know, so they have their, their criteria, as long as it didn't violate those things, then um, you could run your, uh, you could run your, your, your post. But then if I'm an advertiser, I may not want my ad to run next to that post. Well, all of a sudden, a bunch of advertisers stopped advertising on uh, X last week. Significant amounts of money. New York Times is saying it might be as much as $75 million between now and the end of the year. That's a lot of money. And so uh, uh, Elon says, well, it looks to me like the main reason they stopped running it is because of this Media Matters uh, uh, press releases that were put, put out and that these press releases were based on uh, uh, fraud. They were fraudulent, straight up. 
fraudulent. Okay, so let's get into it. According to X, which claims to have tracked what happened, to, what happened with an internal technical investigation, Media Matters was able to produce its examples of ads being paired with extremist content only by rigging its test with user behavior so atypical that no other user would encounter the same ad slash X pairings. The alleged contact is something on the order of a researcher forcing a lab rat to drink water until its stomach burst in order to prove that water is dangerous. That's the, a great analogy. As the complaints allegations detail, first, Media Matters accessed accounts that had been active for at least the, that that had been access, I'm sorry, that had been active for at least 30 days, bypassing X's ad filter for new users. Media Matters then exclusively followed a small subset of users consisting entirely of accounts in one of two categories, those known to produce extreme fringe content and accounts owned by X's big names advertisers. So it was the only two people that it followed. The end result was a feed precision, a feed that was precision designed by Media Matters for one single purpose to produce side-by-side -side ad content placements that, could, that it could then screenshot in an effort to alienate advertisers. But this activity was still not enough to create the pairings of advertisements and content that Media Matters aimed to produce. Media Matters therefore resor resorted to end endlessly scrolling and refreshing its unrepresentative hand-selected feed, generating between 13 and 15 times more advertisements per hour than viewed by the average X user repeating this inauthentic activity until it finally received pages containing the result it wanted, controversial content next to X's largest advertisers paid work. Well, how unrepresentative was this? Well, X's internal user data tells the story of just how far Media Matters went to manufacture an inorganic user experience strictly aimed one purpose. All they wanted to do was get an ad creating an uh, I'm sorry, aimed at creating an interaction between controversial content and a big name advertiser that was seen only, only by Media Matters account and then published broadly. Media Matters set its account to follow these 30 users, far less than the average number of accounts followed by a typical active user, which is 219. That severely limited the amount of, and type of content featured on its feed. The represent, representation put forth by Media Matters constituted point and then six zeros, 90909 percent, six zeros before the first nine percent of impressions served on that day in question. Most or all of these pairings were not seen by literally anyone besides Media Matters' own manipulated account, and no authentic user of the plat platform has been confirmed to have seen any of these pairings. So not a single person has come forth and said, oh yeah, I saw those pairings. Not even, not, not with or without proof. Nobody's come forward and said, oh yeah, I did see those pairings, but I, I, I didn't get a screenshot. Not one single person. So Media Matters proved that it was possible for an ex-user who used the platform for the sole purpose of seeing corporate ads matched with extremist contents to see those pairings if the user tried hard enough. It could have published findings showing this in order to argue that Musk's safeguards were not 100% foolproof. That is not remotely what it did. So it could have, its purpose could have been, look, if you try hard enough, you can make this happen. So therefore, we're just saying to X, hey, make it even, make it even tougher, make it even stronger. But no, here is instead how Media Matters portrayed its, its experiment in a pair of articles by Hananoki by Hannah Noki. The two key publications are a November 16 article titled, here's the title now, As Musk Endorses Anti-Semitic Conspiracy Theory, X has been placing ads for Apple, Bravo, IBM, Oracle, and Xfinity next to pro-Nazi content. And a November 17 article titled, X is placing ads for Amazon, MBA, Mexico, NBC, Universal, and others next to content with white nationalist hashtags. Emphasis added. In each case, the headline sets the tone by promising to show that such, uh, that such placements 
are an ongoing occurrence rather than something that only Media Matters saw and which was generated in an artificial experiment. So in other words, the headlines were misleading, very misleading, <laughs> fraudulent, in fact. Now, a sampling of what Media Matters wrote in the articles, as ex-owner Elon Musk continues his descent into white nationalism and anti-Semitic uh, anti conspiracy theories, his social media platform has been placing ads for major brands like, we list the brands, next to content that touts Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party. During all of this Musk-induced chaos, corporate advertisements have been appearing on pro-Hitler, Holocaust denial, white nationalist pro-violence, and neo-Nazi accounts. We recently found ads for Apple, Bravo, Oracle, Infinity, IBM next to posts that tout Hitler and his Nazi party on X. But as hateful rhetoric flourishes on X, the platform's remaining advertisers are especially affected. In other words, the thrust of the articles was to present these ad placements as ongoing and a recurring problem that Media Matters found rather than events that staged. The screen screenshots represented in the articles gave no indication of their provenance, suggesting to the ordinary reader that these were simply spotted by Media Matters personnel or sent to them by some other users. So as opposed to just you're scrolling through and you saw this, you go, oh my gosh, look at that. And you take a screenshot or somebody sent it to you. No, these of course were created specifically. According to X's complaint, which is consistent with the way the articles present the screenshots, Media Matter went out of its way to avoid transparent by transparency by conducting all of its experiments through a private account that could not be seen by other users. Media Matters omitted in its entirety its process of manufacturing these ad parent pairings. It did not include in its article that it created a user only following, et cetera, et cetera. Neither readers nor advertisers had any way of knowing that the entire feed was orchestrated to get the result. Media Matters also omitted mentioning in its entirety its excessive scrolling and refreshing. It, all of that was left out. Media Matters image choice and its smear also functioned to hide the true nature of its report. All images selected contained only the ad and the controversial content with all of their posts absent from view. Media Matters at no po point included images with any information about the account that was exposed to these images. They cropped that, they cropped that out. So the crop nature of Media Matters deceptive screenshot leaves its profile picture out of the frame. Consistent with its past practices, Media Matter trumpeted the specific advertisements affected in an open effort to get them to cancel business with X. Apple, IBM, Comcast, and NBC Universal all appeared to have canceled or suspended advertisements, results that Media Matter publicized and celebrated afterwards. In the unusual case of defamation or, or its commercial cousin, cousin, business disparagement, the main claim raised by X, it can be difficult to meet the demanding threshold for proving special damages directly traced to the statement. Here, the Media Matters report appears to have been the direct and proximate cause of those losses by X and to have been written with the aim of causing them, if by no other reason, I'm adding this, if by no other reason about their celebration afterwards. So defamation and the commercial cousin, business disparagement, these are difficult cases to, to win. Um, you have to have a, a great proof case, but they're suggesting that the proof case is there. And I, I begin, I'm certainly believing it. X has chosen its venue well. The Northern District of Texas and in particular Fort Worth has a conservative branch, a conservative jury pool and a relatively fast moving civil docket. All bad news for uh, uh, a left-wing organization defending a politically charged civil suit. Judge Mark Pittman, to whom the case has been assigned, is a Trump appointee. The district is not the sort that tends to favor disposing of cases on motions to dismiss the com complaint, rather they allow them to go forward to discovery. As we shall see, Texas law, while hardly unique on this point, provides some fairly clear guidance in favor of the legal claims bought by X. So now I'm going to get into the legal side. You, this might be as far as you wanted to go. You get to see kind of how the setup is. But I really, you know, I'm a graduate of UCLA Law, as you well know. And I, this is the part that's kind of fun. It might be fun for you as well. Does X have a case? Assuming that it can prove the facts alleged in the complaint, 
and that those facts will be judged under Texas law, it would seem like the case can survive a motion to dismiss and get to trial. A pair of defamation suits against Dateline NBC provided examples of how these kinds of cases can go. In 1993, NBC settled a lawsuit filed by General Motors after a Dateline program about allegedly unsafe GM pickup trucks featured a test in which a crash caused a truck to catch fire. Sound familiar? NBC insisted in its that its report was accurate. It showed a real GM pickup truck. It literally did catch fire and said, NBC, GM uh, pickups really were prone to that sort of fire. What NBC didn't tell viewers was that its test, that its test rigged the truck by replacing the gas cap with remote controlled incendiary model rocket engines. <laughs> what deceived the viewers was the rigged nature of the test. Media Matters may argue that its reports were in some sense literally true. It did manage to get the ads paired with extremist content as reflected in the screenshots, and this proved that it was the, uh, possible for this to happen. But then Dateline tried the same argument, and the fact that it hid the rocket's engines from its audience was its downfall. The thrust of X's lawsuit in the concealment of the rigged nature of the test and the use of their test to convey a false impression about the likelihood that X users would encounter ads from these companies paired with the extremist content, that likelihood is precisely the important part for advertisers. To say that Media Matters found these ad pairings is akin to saying that a cop who plants drugs in your car found the drugs there. Under Texas law, a defamation or business disparagement case can be based on a report that uses literally true words or images if the report omits facts or juxtaposes them in misleading ways in order to create a false impression. The leading case is the Texas Supreme Court decision in Turner versus KTRK Television. Turner involved a, a the case, Turner, involved a television report about Sylvester Turner, who was then running for mayor of Houston. He, he, he still holds that job today. His campaign dropped like a rock after the report, and he lost the race. It involved the, his legal representation of a man who committed insurance fraud by loading up on insurance policies while under criminal investiga investigation and then faking his own death. Turner prepared this man's will. The report claimed that Turner was deeply involved in the fraud and created the impression of his culpability by stating a series of true facts, but in misleading ways. For example, its presentation compressed the timeline of the events, portraying Turner as, a, as scheming to get a friend named administrator of the estate without mentioning that the friend had already been named as an executor of the will and stated truthfully that a court had removed Turner from the ensuing litigation for conflict of interest without mentioning that the conflict arose from the legal rule that a, a lawyer can't appear in a case where he is likely to be a witness. The court, in, a, in an opinion joined by then Justice Greg Abbott and Alberto Gonzalez, explained, the, mentioned those two names, look there, explained the legal standard. Because a publication's meaning depends on its effect on an ordinary person's perception, courts have held that under Texas law, a publication convey a false and defamatory meaning by omitting or juxtaposing facts, even though all the story's individual statements considered in isolation were literally true or non-defamatory. Just as the substantial truth doctrine precludes liability for a publication that correctly conveys a story's gist, or sting, although erring in details, these cases permit liability for the publication that gets the details right, but fails to put them in the proper context and therefore gets the stories just wrong. This is consistent with a broader principle of law that I've written about, that this guy has written about on many occasions. The law of fraud and false statements, which appears in different guises in the civil and criminal law, is generally concerned with the materiality and deception. In other words, it's not a game of gotcha to find false statements. The point is to punish those who actually convince others of something false or at least say things likely to do so. On an important matter that, and this would have to be on an important matter that might change their behavior where the audience doesn't have its own access to the truth. And boy, it sure fits everything on that. It is common throughout different areas of false statement and fraud law to rule that 
literally true statements can be misleading and fraudulent because they admit crucial context. Of course, this is, this is, this is obviously true. Rig tests and deceptive editing of actual words are the heartland of these doctrines. Texas cases show a variety of ways in which the rule, allowing suits for such things as defamation as a whole and libel by implication, has been applied in defamation and business disparagement suits. The Texas Supreme Court in re Lips Lipsky was the case in 2015, allowed a claim by a drilling company against a homeowner who blamed the company for flammable gas in its as well. This public statement's omitted details about the nature of the drilling, the characteristics of the gas, and the details of regulatory proceedings, all of which com com combined to produce a false impression of the drilling company's culpability. A Texas appeals court in, memor in the case In Memorial Herman Health Systems versus Gomez upheld a jury verdict for a heart surgeon who said his hospital had defamed him to referring physicians by spreading unreliable data accusing them of high patient mortality rates. The Federal District Court in Western District of Texas in Connect Solar allowed a claim to go forward against, a Pan against uh, Panasonic by a company selling secondhand Tesla solar panels custom made for Panasonic in competition with its own products. Panasonic had warned customers that the seller was misrepresenting the panels as being backed by any warranty whatsoever by Panasonic Life Solutions Companies of America. That was true, but it omitted that they were backed by a warranty from a different Panasonic entity. The test is going to go on with another couple of cases here. The First Amendment doesn't prevent states from punishing defamation based on omissions and context rather than the literal falsity. In Mas Mason versus New York Magazine, the Supreme Court of the United States allowed a magazine to be sued for falsely attributing a statement to a person, regardless of the truth or falsity of the factual matters asserted within the quoted statement. So in other words, they made a true statement, they published the true statement, but they falsely attributed it to somebody other than who made the statement. That's not far from accusing X of placing these ads in the ordinary course of its business, given how hard Media Matters had to work to put them in the company's mouth. And the court also concluded in Milikov versus Lorraine Journal in 1990, they, they found perjury in a judicial proceeding. I'm sorry, let me see this again. The court concluded that accusations, in that case, the accusations were perjury in a judicial proceeding, are not always constitutionally protected opinion if they imply facts that are false and defamatory. So this kind of lawsuit is very hard to win, they conclude. And in a society that promotes robust public debate and hard-hitting investigative journalism, it should be hard to win. But X has alleged facts that make for a potentially strong case. I would say a very strong case. And that should give readers of Media Matters pause in accepting its charges in the future. So for those of you who have ever read Media Matters, I certainly haven't, I will admit to that. I read a lot of left-wing stuff, uh, but I it's mostly things like CNN and MSNBC um, because I wanna be informed about what the left is thinking as a conservative individual. I like to know what the other folks have on their mind. I want to be empathetic with their positions. I want to have an understanding of where their thoughts are coming from. What's what's at the heart of how they think. I always want to know that because it might mean I'll change my opinion because the, the motive, the heart is way more important than the facts. So I mean, not, not the facts, more way more important than the nature of the argument that might be being put forward. They may be doing a lousy job of convincing me based on their understanding of the situation. But then if I hear their heart, I might have to go out through my own research and come to my own conclusions, which might be the same as theirs. So this is, a, I'm hoping that this was useful to some of you. <laughs> hit like if you liked it, hit subscribe, hit notify, do all that kind of stuff and buy your Cybertruck bottle opener and join me later as we look at the Tesla news for this Saturday. It's been great talking to you.